Before I officially start, I should let you know a couple things. I am not the type of person who would seek out the opportunity to speak in front of people I do not know. I'm not the type of person to seek out the opportunity to speak in front of people I do know. There's a couple things about me. I'm not an extrovert, and I never imagined I would have a job where I would be public speaking every day. I am an introvert in an extroverted profession. The author Susan Cain wrote a New York Times bestseller book titled Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. In it, the book explores the fact that in society, we constantly underestimate introverts. When we do this, everyone loses. Many studies have been done about introverts and extroverts, depending on what study you look at. One third to one half of all Americans are introverts. That means one out of every two to three people you know are introverts. If you're an extrovert yourself, Kane explains you are surely raising, managing, married to, or coupled with an introvert. So let's start at the beginning. I was born an introvert, was shy and quiet growing up. My older sister, Corey, is an extrovert. I learned very early on that I didn't have to talk. She would talk for me. And I was more than happy to let her do this. So when I was four, I fell down the basement stairs, mesmerized by a slinky. Unsure of my injuries, we went to the hospital. When asked what hurt, my sister started rattling off my ailments. The doctor politely told my sister that he would love to hear from the patient, me. I thought she was doing a great job, guys. Um, it was my head that hurt, not my arm, but I figured he would figure that out at some point. He went to college for a while, so come on, isn't that really what he was supposed to do? <laughs> so he's a professional, he should have already known. All through school, I continued to be quiet and shy. I remember learning about the differences between introverts and extroverts in elementary school. According to my teacher, extroverts were the life of the party, talkative, friendly, she then explained introverts as reserved bookworms who would rather be by themselves than interact with others. I remember sinking down in my seat and realizing that I was an introvert and I was never going to be the life of the party. I thought about this as I stood up and screamed at her. Do you realize that this experience will stick with me forever and shape who I become as an adult? She put her hand to her chest and was taken aback. You guys, none of that happened. Um, I put my nose back in my book and kept reading because I'm an introvert. Come on. <laughs> the idea that extroverts are fun and introverts are quiet is a misconception. In her book, Kane explains introverts aren't necessarily shy. Shyness is the fear of social disapproval or humiliation, while introversion is a preference for environments that, not over, are, that are not overstimulating. So often in society, we try to make issues black or white, this or that, when really we know most situations are gray. So without a doubt, I was a shy, introverted child, but with age and experience, I'm no longer shy, but I still prefer an environment that is not overstimulating. In the article, How Black and White Thinking Hurts You and What You Can Do to Change It, Rebecca Joy Stanborough writes, an all or nothing mindset does not allow for us to find the middle ground. Stanborough goes on to write that this all-or-nothing thinking can harm your relationships, keep you from learning, and it can limit your career along with other things. We must get away from saying introverts are this and extroverts are that. It's detrimental to a student's growth. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, and it goes against the growth mindset. We want students to have the, use the growth mindset in their self-talk and how they face challenges, whether it be in their life or at school. Instead of, I'm bad at math, we want them to say, I struggled on that one math test and I'll do better next time. In the same way, we must move away from equating extroverts to fun-loving individuals and introverts are described as socially awkward recluses. Unfortunately, we live in a world that caters to extroverts. In classrooms, teachers want students to speak up, participate, work well in groups. Students that don't talk that much are considered underachieving, non-participatory, and boring. However, if you remember, one-third to one-half of all Americans are introverts. So instead of dismissing the quiet ones, we instead change our thinking. We give them the time and platform to comfortably speak. Even though I am an introvert, I definitely had extrovert experiences growing up. In fifth grade, I participated in the talent show at my school. My talent was telling jokes. 
in front of the entire school and many of my classmates' parents, I told my jokes and hoped for a laugh. My father ended up writing all the jokes for me. Side note, he didn't write the speech. I asked him, he said no. Uh, he said I was an adult. I remember one joke well. I remember one of my dad's jokes well, and I would like to tell it to you now. It's a classic dad joke. And at the time, I don't think I completely understood what I was saying, which also might have been a problem. So here's my dad joke. So the other night, I dreamt I ate a 20-pound marshmallow. And you guys get this. When I woke up, my pillow was gone. It was crickets in that gym, much like it is right now, thanks. Uh, not even a pity laugh. It's fine, I'll talk to my therapist about it. Um, this, also could have been due, this also could have been due to my flat delivery or the fact that I only made eye contact with the gym floor. I was shaking and scared, but I did it. I know that this was not something a typical introvert would do. I had to push back, come out of my shell to do it. It was my first experience pretending to be an extrovert, and I only passed out once. I'm just joking, I didn't pass out. In college, I majored in English and was constantly asked if I was going to be a teacher. This annoyed me, and I said no. That sounds awful. The idea of being a writer was appealing. I love the idea of writing in my own office, be by myself, no one's going to bother me. So after college, I worked in politics. I soon realized it wasn't the field for me. Thank thankfully, through that job, I had some great opportunities. I took student tour groups around. I volunteered and tutored a third grader in reading. And I realized that I really enjoyed those experiences and, and liked working with students. So I decided to go back to school and get my master's degree in education. I was finally going to be the teacher that all those years ago I said I would never be. The funny thing is, is that as an introvert, for me at least, getting in front of kids is much less daunting than getting up in front of adults. I know many other people, probably even in this room, would say they feel the opposite. They'd rather get up in front of adults. As an introvert, being a teacher is extremely draining. I would say teaching is a physically demanding and emotionally exhausting profession, no matter your personality. However, we introverts need downtime. Every day you are performing for a group of students. You have to leave your own personal problems at the door and give them 100%. When the day is over, I need to recharge and be quiet and be by myself. I'm not being mad, or I'm not mad, I'm not being antisocial. I just need time to power up and recharge for the next day. While teaching seems like an extroverted profession, there are actually many more introverts in education than you might think, and that's a good thing. We need a mix of extroverts and introverts in the classroom. This way, students will get information presented in different ways and hopefully connect with a teacher and an adult who understands them. So what's the point? What's the point in any of this? I don't know. I blacked out a while ago and I'm on autopilot. I'm just kidding, <laughs> or am I? You'll never know, introverts are really mysterious. <laughs> The point is, is that we need to reframe how we look at introverts. We need to get away from the extrovert ideal. The extrovert ideal is defined as the omnipresent belief that the ideal self is gregarious, alpha, and comfortable in the spotlight. As a culture, we say we value individuality among people. However, as Kane explains, all too often we admire one type of individual, the kind who's comfortable putting himself out there. We need to remember how many things we would not have in this world if not for introverts. People like Sir Isaac Newton, W.B. Yeats, Frederick Chopin, George Orwell, and Steven Spielberg. They're all introverts. Google was co-created by Larry Page, who is an introvert. Without Larry Page, people would not be able to say they researched something when you know all they did was Google it. I have fallen into the extrovert ideal in both my professional and personal life. When I would rather go home and watch TV instead of going out with a group of friends, I ask myself, what is wrong with me? Why can't I be more social? As a teacher, I have told parents their students are too quiet and need to participate more, even though research has shown that introverts actually get better grades and are more knowledgeable than extroverts. Sometimes I forget that I was very much the same way when I was in school. I caught myself doing this the other day in class. During a book discussion, we described one character as an extrovert, bubbly, talkative. We described the other character as an introvert, socially awkward and shy. Later on, I realized my mistake, that being an introvert does not equal being socially awkward or shy. 
I jokingly reminded my students that not all introverts are socially awkward, but I am. No one disagreed. <laughs> that was a rough day for me. So what can we do about this? First, we can stop acting like introverts are recluses. Are some introverts hermits? Sure. Are some extroverts shy? Yes. Here are some ideas. Stop with the, the all or nothing terms. Introvert does not equal shyness, just like extrovert does not equal fun. Believe me, I've met a lot of extroverts that are not fun at all, and they know who they are. Celebrate introverts and their many contributions to society. Examples, Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and Jeff Bezos. Let go of the extrovert ideal. Nothing is ideal all of the time. It depends on the situation. Make places like schools more introvert friendly. Give students choices. Not every project has to be a group project. Don't always praise the first one to answer. Give more wait time. Encourage students to pause and think. The loudest, quickest student should not always be the one to answer first. Schedule quiet time, quiet time during the school day. Just like some kids need to run around outside or run around in the gym to burn off energy, introverts need downtime. Think about balancing your classroom decorations. Too many posters, uh, too, much, too much clutter can be overstimulating. Buildings should have more flexible seating areas so students can spread out. Introverts should have the opportunity to sit quietly. Encourage young introverts to explore professions that may be considered more for extroverts. Don't limit a young person before they have to, the chance to consider extroverted type careers. Allow introverts the space to find their own voice, speak up for themselves, and celebrate quiet reflection. In a world where we are constantly told to hurry up, we need to take a deep breath and learn to slow down and value the pause. If you had ever told my younger self that I would be giving a speech in front of an audience on purpose, I would have laughed at the absurdity. But here I am. I'm doing it. I'm an introvert with extrovert tendencies. The famous Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung once said, there's no such thing as a pure introvert or extrovert. Such a person would be in the lunatic asylum. I'm not an all introvert, just like someone else is not all extrovert. I am an introvert with extrovert traits. We must get away from this all or nothing thinking about personality types. We must support our introverts and be aware of how our world is set up for extroverts. With this awareness, we must start making changes so our introverts can thrive. And I've always wanted to say this. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you. <laughs>